Hey guys, welcome to a new lesson in Pro Teaches Noobs. As, as I have, returning back to a single student again, Bianca. Hey. And today we're going to be going over a unique thing. DC used to do these things called DC Challenges, where they would come up with a general plot, and then they would do, a, a creative team would do one issue, they would end a cliffhanger, and then pass it off to the next creative team to do whatever the hell they wanted for that issue before they would pass it on to the next. Well, eventually they decided in honor of Jack Kirby, what would have been Jack Kirby's 100th birthday if he was still alive, they decided to do the Commandi Challenge, where similar thing, they would assign different um, cre and different creators um, to each issue. Even the cover artists would be different than the main creative teams. And basically they were the... Robert? You're frozen, Robert. Roberto. Unless it's my internet connection. I don't know. Let me check. Mm, mine seems fine. Do, 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 Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Hello. Whoa, what the heck? There's two Roberts. Whoa, one left. <laughs> okay, let's try that again, shall we? Imposter, you killed the other Robert. <laughs> I don't know why my browser crashed. What the heck? Dumb browsers. <laughs> Okay, should I keep this in or should we should I keep that in or should we just start over? Yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> no, let's just keep it in. I think that'll be a good comedy bet. Yeah. Besides, less um less editing. Yeah. What did I get cut off at? Um, you were explaining the comic. It would have been a hundred uh, years of, of Kirby's yeah. uh, like birthday. Yeah, but, but basically and he... they were to end on a cliffhanger where um, Kamani had to be in a life or death situation. Like he was about to face certain doom. Now, the only stipulation was there had to be a way out of it, even if it seemed so impossible. They, the creator himself had to have a way out, and it would be up to the next creator to come with a way to get him out of it. Mm. Now, for now for this one, now the first, these were the 12-issue series, and the first and last issue would have two different creative team, uh, sets of creative teams was in it so they would each tell they would be double length issues so yeah this first cover is done by bruce tim i thought so i'm like this looks like bruce tim yep um and this other cover was done by jim lee i think oh no 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 that's dale dale eaglesman and this mm. is um keith giffen i believe did that cover but where yeah, did this come out uh, hold on a sec. Oh, it's a tiger. I love tigers. And what the heck is that big gigantic hand? Usually it's only a monkey. Not a monkey. 2017? Yeah. What? So technically Kirby would be 105 this year. Whoa. Yeah, this first, but um, this first one opens up. This is Keith Gibbons artwork. As we see young Kamandi waking up, being told, "You're gonna miss the bus." As you see, he's a big fan of the heroes. He sees what's supposed to be his grandma as he's running on out of there. And as he does, he says hi to Mr. Royer and Mr. Kirby, of course. Oh. Uh, but then, as he's on, like, stop right there. I don't care if you're late for school or the last boy on earth. Ha. No one crosses against the red. It's for your safety. Yeah, but I'm, I know, but I'm really late. It's my job to make sure nothing happens to you. Like the fate of the world depended on it. Weird. <laughs> then all of a sudden, someone attacks where they've been. And they're basically like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And all of a sudden, everyone's taking out weapons, getting blasted. And he's like, what the hell is going on here? Starts um, running on out. Everyone's getting attacked by who knows what these are. There's a bounty up on his head. We see these weird um, 
rat creature, but then Mr. Kirby tackles him, gets his face blasted off, revealing he's a robot. What the heck? And he makes it home to Grandma Iris. And to tr acting like nothing else is happening. It's like, yes, dear, Grandma knows all about them. Grandma knows everything. And then Ooh. it's revealed <laughs> she's a robot, too. And basically saying that this is for your own good, pushes them out of there before things blow up. And then he's saying, like, find your parents, save the world. Remember, Command D is in you know, here. That would be the name of the, um, um, the bunker he was in. Mm. wakes up and we see some more talking animals they might like, put him in the carriage yeah like, he has no idea what's going on he would say like what uh, what where are you taking me silence you forfeited your right to speak by being bored human that tiger is giving me a thundercats vibe oh wait until you see later artists Oh. Turns out this was Dan DeDio doing the writing with Keith Giffen, and it, it and this cliffhanger ends up on him, um, well, ready to deal with this big gorilla guy. I need to survive this challenge, or else I really will be the last boy on Earth. To be continued on the very next page, as we get Dan Abnett and Dale Eaglesham doing the artwork, and it just opens up. I mean, let's be honest out. So this is like his doom doing with this gorilla. Very easy. Just jump out of the way. <laughs> And he puts up a good fight, stabs it in the eye. <laughs> Although apparently it looks like he has two eyes in one socket. <clears throat> See oh, I, mean? I thought I thought it was supposed to signify it moving. <laughs> no, I, was, I, I can't really tell for sure. But yeah, then it's told like, um, like the lucky antics of a desperate creature. I guess I know this is Abnett doing all the writing. So yeah, he's most of this is trying to deal with. That, that'll be something you'll know. Some of the stories, a big chunk of the story, the issue is going to deal with them getting out of the last cliffhanger. Others, they're going to just brush aside and do their own story. But this one's focusing more on a big fight. And wow! And uh, yep, it's double eyes and one on one eyeball. Oh. Okay. You make sense. Yep. But yeah, they're like, and the crowd goes wild. That was not luck. The animal is clearly cutting. That suggests an unexpected level of intelligence. Bring the animal to me. Oh boy. Like, Why I, does it remind it, me of He Man like that? <laughs> a little. I believe the animal might make an excellent gladiator if trade. I concur, my lord. Hey, easy with the chains. Someone to talk to me. Where am I? Again, the species vocalize, the specimen vocalizes. Animals learn to mimic and parrot language all the time. <laughs> you taught me that, Doctor. It is just making noise. That's hilarious. It's just one of those always where they feel like, oh, they're just, he's just mimicking us. As if I didn't have enough to do, Lord Prince. Yeah, well, let's examine you, animal. I hope you don't have any fleas. I was thinking the same about you. You, but I, you understood me. Of course. You can't talk. Well, what do you know? Where did you learn that? There's no indication of surgical alterations to the vocal cords. Hey, rule. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is good writing, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's fantastic. I love it. And now the funny thing is, this was, and the thing about Kamandi is, it originally was supposed to be Planet of the Ace related. They couldn't get the rights, so Kirby did his own thing. Nice. And you kind of could tell with this, can't you? Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, find your parents, save the world. I know there's been a great disaster, and that humans like me have been forced into hiding. I need to find my parents. Oh, no, no, no. The world is far too dangerous for anyone to wander out about on a quest. You'd be dead and eaten in hours. You're better off here in Tiger City. An animal with your cunning could have a bright future in the arena. Besides, you have found the favor of the influential Prince Tufton. I'll show you the safe life you can have if you promise to behave. Either way, I saw a Superman cape. Well, yeah, yeah, because Superman, it, and basically, the great disaster occurred. Almost all heroes have been wiped out. Oh. Oh, look at this. He's on a leash. <laughs> oh, and then, um, war certainly seems to be porting around here. Prince Tufton drills the tiger guards in preparation for the next campaign. War is our way of life and our salvation. Oh, boy. All hail, great Caesar. <laughs> I return to you in victory. Behold the spoils of my mighty triumph. And they see these other ty and his leopards, and he's treating them like animals. With, no. with elephants. 
Whoa! Oh, a holy warhead! That's a nuke, an atomic warhead. He could kill everyone. Nonsense, animal. It is a tool of the gods. Wow. And he books it for good reason. <laughs> and, oh my god, they're stockpiling weapons. <laughs> Animals are forbidden from the Hall of War. A jack, a, a jackdaw. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that bird before. <laughs> Uh, who knows? But yeah, put up a good fight, good action. You know what? What'd you say? Mm hmm. Oh, but yeah, he's, he's then obviously ch chastised him, saying, Great Caesar blesses us. He's about to wake the god up. He what? Oh, crap. And there's the cliffhanger that's, um, that the nuke's about to go off soon. Oh, hello, dog. <laughs> Doggy. So yeah, so here we are after two years of planning and prepping with the first issue of the biggest comics event of the new year so far, the Commodity Challenge. This series is a labor of love for everyone involved, myself included, as we get to celebrate the work of one of the industry's greatest creators, Jack Kirby, while playing with one of his greatest characters, Commodity, the last boy ever on Earth. And basically they explain about where to come in or say, you know, how... Dana Emmett takes over the letter page to share his ending to this issue's cliffhanger so you can compare it to a Pete Tomasi's resolution. That was the plan, but then some other creators don't do that. They just ramble about why they wanted to do the project. <laughs> now, I should point this out. Originally, Len Wein, a writer and editor and everything, was supposed to do the final issue, but unfortunately, he passed away before he even had a chance to do it. Oh... It made it made sense because he was one of Jack's personal friend, you know, closest friends, and was one like practically like an assistant to him when he was at DC. Instead, Paul Levitz would try would do a story to wrap things up. I just want to point that out of the way. So this was both dedicated to Jack and Len. Okay. Oh, and on to the next issue. This one has um, Pete Tomasi, art by Neil Adams, and a cover by Kenneth Rockefort. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so the dog is a pit bull. Yep. Uh, he right, he, he, <laughs> he uh, looks like a great Dane in, in some <laughs> angles. That's a different dog. Who can? It's hard to tell. Mm. But I would say, oh, rest in peace, Neil. Yes. And then Neil does this. Basically, the first cover is just someone else involved that's not involved in any of the in the direct books. And the sec the variant cover and goes with the interior artist. What the heck? <laughs> just a sec. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got a text or something. Gross, Texas. Yep. Hey, our new god! That's no god. It's a nuclear warhead, you stupid tiger. We're all doomed! <laughs> As basically puts up a, and Dr. Canis, and you're right, that is the dog, and that is Dr. Canis. I speak because I'm not an animal. You are! Oh, snap. Yeah, and then um, T minus as it's counting down, and he's trying to get there saying, everyone run, run before it blows. Three, to what? Like, oh man, this sucks. I'll never even get to kiss. Uh, but where's the big boom? God awakens and he is ready to turn. No. Turns out it was used by these gorillas. They were hiding in it. Oh, like a Trojan horse thing. Yep. Giant ape holding inside an old nuclear missile like it was a Trojan horse. Now, see, that was their way of resolving it. I'm like, okay, clever. But again, it could have been anything. They could have done any way to resolve it. <laughs> I like how you just don't know, and that's what makes it fascinating. Like I would have never that's have gotten that. That's what makes it a challenge. I need I need more of these challenges. I want <laughs> I want a Batman, a Superman, a Flash challenge. Right, so... but you know, his commandy's picking up fast. Yeah. You know, getting into action. Death the Caesar, wipe him out as the gorillas are all attacking. Yeah, he makes his way back to the Museum of War and, um, like, like, use the rocks, fight for the king, do the death! Yeah, he made, oh, a bolo net gun. 
Stay down, you big bird. And wait, the batarangs? What? He has hands. Oh, he must have grabbed it from the armory or something. He has he has human hands. Uh, oh, claw, human claws more. I guess. I guess. <laughs> oh, the Mobius chair. Oh. So yeah, he sits on it, starts to fly off. The chair is alive again. Get him before he vanishes. How about I just grab you two idiots instead? Okay, don't let go. Or we may be pulled apart. That may have been stupid. Mm. Looks like it's mother. All all these different things. And look, there's there's the Trinity, um, Sandman's mask, um, comic books, Legion included. And then they land outside of there. Can I go back to sleep? My head is killing me. You will explode now. That chair is set dormant for as long as I'm that guy you have had a kingdom. I'm sure my father forgot it was even in the museum. And now a human animal shows up out of nowhere and uses it to transport us somewhere far away. Hey, we should follow the water to shelter before the night falls. Like, he's just like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> So, yeah, they're just like, I know, like, he's basically, he doesn't know any further about it. Like, but then why did you run from my father? You kidding? He was toting around a nuclear missile. I know all about the great disaster. And my guess is those missiles are what caused it. It was supposed to be a god bringer. My father would never knowingly bring disaster to his people. Yeah, well, he got duped by some apes. So how's that working out? Look, over there. Okay, well, here's a, a clue to where we ended up. That means anything to, that mean anything to either of you? Welcome, D... Uh, D I thought D it was going to be like Diego. I think, that's, I think that's San Diego. Welcome to San Diego, America's... Hey, going to move so far out of tiger territory. Prince Tufton, we need to return immediately. We can't stay here. Why? What's out there? That's scaring the hell out of you. Whoa! The Wild Human Reserve. And, uh-oh, Manhunters. The heck, they look like Sentinels. <laughs> no man escapes. The Manhunters. And I think he killed them. They killed them. Oh, See, no. Weapon, no danger. No man escapes the manhunter. Okay, you said that a couple times already, but you're wrong about one thing. There's always a way to escape. If you don't have a I mean, there's always a way to escape. If you don't have a problem with dying, ah! now that's going to be one downside. A lot of these um, issues are going to end with him falling to his death. Huh. Interesting. Oh, yeah, and this is um, Tomasi explaining his stuff about, you know, uh, no, Dan Amnett talking about his stuff leading to where he had in mind and then, again, why he liked working in, in this. Oh, Amanda Connor. Oh, I was going to say, that looks familiar. Mm-hmm. And actually, she does, it, it's Amanda and Palmiati and Connor working on this one. Oh, Nice. Um, with, I forget who did the cover to that one, but there's Amanda's cover. Looks like a horror movie, doesn't it? Right, yeah, it does. Uh, the, uh, Ben Caldwell did this cover. I love the look. Yep. Ah, what have I done? <laughs> the gods have given us a gift. Release the ravers. So, yeah, basically they have this old, um, ship. They fly over, grab him. Definitely not good. Get off. Stop fighting us. Let us save you. <laughs> oh, and then he wakes up and finds this weird blob creature that creates a, this plant lady named Villa, who actually will stick around for quite a while. Hello, I am Villa. I am yours. Mine? I don't own you. I'm not even sure what you are. I am Villa. I am yours. Uh, okay, bud. Greetings. I see you have met your person. She was specifically created for you. Creations for the creator. Where am I and who are you people? Please fo uh, follow me. All your questions will be answered. I am Captain Fritz of the God Watchers. This is my ship. The scriptures have foretold your arrival. We have been sent to retrieve you and await your orders. Welcome the gods back to us. Please tell us your name. It is, come on, Kefa, kid. It, and it is... Right, it is Kabandi. Oh, somebody ate whatever that creature was. An eater. You, no, no. 
I meant whatever I was flying. Oh, it was not not. It wasn't a fly. I don't think so. It was whatever this thing, because basically you're trying to tell him like you're in danger. Oh, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> but yeah, I got eaten. But basically, it's like you are everything to me. I am yours. Will you please stop saying that? I don't own you. You're free to go as you and as you please. I do not understand this word free. But she is adorable, isn't she? I love that they added flowers on her actual pupils. Yeah. Oh my god, you're right. But yeah, and then um, they see these um, bat creatures and everything. Um, as they're explaining, like, doesn't this and doesn't seem this is necessary? Thank you. I am sorry for being so rough earlier. Is it true what the captain said about you being happy here? You are a messenger of the gods. You should know that answer. They are mistaken and refuse to listen. Their kind seized us from battle and made us slaves. If we do anything they disprove of, they torture us. And worse, of course, so of course, they're not really happy there. I, I, thought, there were lo- I thought there were monkeys with long arms. Oh, they're bats. <laughs> but yeah, they were like, best you play along. We are being watched right now, the mo- and right this moment, by the small ones. That's what the little creatures are. Oh... So yeah, everyone thinks like, yo, he's happy. Like, I'm no messenger, but they st- they're they not listening still. Mm-hmm. But then they have a photo of Kamandi. Oh. It fell from the heavens like you. As you can see, the true gods are there behind you, meaning his parents. Oh. Yep. Let long live the god watchers. Let us dine. I'm so hungry. I can hear a horror. I can eat. I can eat. So where's the food? Are you not hungry? But... They um, but they are and they are as, oh man, they're eating. Oh no, the creature is like Villa. No, oh, it hurts, but it slowly grows back. Our purpose is to feed the God Watchers. I am Villa. I am yours. No one is mine, and I am no one's. I'd rather starve to death. Captain, something is wrong here. Tell the small ones to keep an eye on him. At least the ones you did not eat yet. I am. <laughs> Oh boy, they look like they're in pain. Oh my gosh. And Kamandi, can I just sit in peace for a few moments? I am so bar- ba- sorry if I am bothering you. That was rude of me. Please have a seat, Villa. Why would you let them eat your people like that? We were created to serve them. And I, you, we know no other way. It's wrong of them to do uh, do all of this. It. It's wrong. And, okay, got it. The messenger is angry, upset. But why? Search me. I think I see land in the distance. Is that the God Watcher's island? That and that and that is the island of the Jaguar Sun Cult. We have a narrow passage ahead of the land of the savage bat tribes to the east of us. Normally, we would need to be ca- extra careful. But with you on board, we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear? When you found me, I was fa- falling to my death. What makes you think I can protect you? The signs, the pictures... We were sent, sent to, I'm a human. No superpowers, no connection to any of your gods. I can bleed and die just like the rest of you. Here, give me that. So he basically said, like, would I be able to bleed? Oh, no. Everyone to their post. Guys, aren't you overreacting? I'm just one man. Uh-oh, the bats. Oh, no. Right, come on, D. His grip. There's no way to save me. Hang on. Gets her arm ripped off as she's like, yes, it will grow back. Did you enjoy the taste? Are you serious? <laughs> like, surely they would not harm their own kind. Once they, And once any of us is made prisoner by the God Watchers, they consider us tainted. We become a target as much as anyone else. The ship and its crew are no match for a full on assault. No one is going anywhere. Men, arrest this imposter and kill the other three. Oh, crap. Oh, man, he gets his head ripped right off! Oh, my gosh. They make their way out of there. Hell oil! Uh-oh. <laughs> They're killing their own. Soldier bats are expendable. Die, traitors! Where to? We can't go back home, so we're going to have to take our chances at the Sun Cult Island. Is it safe? Safe? How long have you been on this planet, Commandy? Not long enough, obviously. Uh oh, and then the leopards. The the sun hair one will do very well. Yes, be careful with him. 
Oh boy, they're ready to sacrifice him. Sacrifice, uh -oh. sacrifice. Yep. And oh, mm, dinner. But but he's huge. Wouldn't he need to eat a whole forest to be satisfied? Look, he's wearing a jet fighter as on his neck, like a necklace. I didn't even notice that. I was looking at the dead giraffe and the dead uh, elephant. Oh yeah. So what do you think so far? Oh, this is great. So yeah, how are they gonna get out of this one? This is James. <laughs> this is James the Indian, the, the Force, with um, the interior artwork by Carlos Dionda, and this one is by Paul Pope. I mean, come on, D. Uh, looks delicious. Our God is pleased with the offering, and the sun will shine bright this year. Our troubles will be at an end. Need to get out of this trip, or I'll be torn to shreds. Hope oh, Eddie puts up a good fight. Oh! Wait, this isn't blood. Oh, Oil? It's a <gasps> oh dear, this isn't right. What do you mean, Rollish? It's a creature still alive? I believe so. What is this? I thought my eyes and uh, my ears had deceived me. The little Harris ape can talk. How very peculiar. I see where we went wrong. The machines and molars should have ripped into pieces, but the swallowing function activated too quickly. Machine? Take the girl and make sure you do it correctly this time. Viola, no! <laughs> my, oh my. Come on, D, you're alive. Viola, you're all right. I can't feel my arms and legs, but the connection won't take long to grow back. Remarkable. Stand back! I, it even has feelings for a friend, a sentient bipedal plant creature, and a talking human. This is truly something special, isn't it, Rollish? Yes, Professor Kenno. Remarkable! You're going to tell us what the hell is going on right now. I suppose explanation on order. Rollish, why don't you bring our guests some tea? Rollish and I were born to the primitives you saw below. You can still hear their dreadful drumming and carrying on if you listen hard enough. The Jaguar Sun Cults. The fools! They believe in the great jaguar that pushes the sun across the sky, and that they alone know that secret. Anyone who comes to this island is seen as wanting to steal that sacred knowledge. I was smarter than the others. I have found an old compound deep in the heart of the jungle, full of incredible machines and vehicles. In my youth, I would, have taken that, I would take them apart and put them back together to learn their inner workings. But any science was seen as an affront to the jaguar gods. We were found and exiled, hunted. It wasn't until we finished constructing this automaton from the ancient machines that we managed to sway them. Their gods wouldn't, uh, God wouldn't allow us to study the true nature of the world. Then we would become their god with science. That's Wait. a clever idea! That's amazing. That's the question, a wasn't, he, uh, wasn't he a painted blue before he got eaten? Uh, don't, well, it's hard to tell. It looks like there's an orange light in there. Oh, and yeah, but yeah, he kind of was. But I think, I think that could have been, there could have been saliva in the creature. Ew. That's very clever of you, Professor. Indeed, my boy, Commandy. Yes, sir, and if you're not actually going to eat us, why don't you take us to the edge of the island, far away from the cult? We'll leave this place and never tell your secret. Isn't that right, Bella? Oh, of course not. Oh, my, no, heaven, heavens, no. We can't allow you to leave. There's so much we can learn from your physiology. A true scientist never passes up the opportunity for more knowledge. Of course! <laughs> oh, geez, you probably shouldn't leave something like this lying around. Could be dangerous. Uh-oh! They're going right back off the and up the throat. More wine. It's the offering. Seems to be coming out of the god's mouth. <laughs> oh, boy. Get back here! Get you! Let's see about that. Oh, and he, they actually took what was just oh. at work and actually utilized it! Nice! Uh-oh! They're in trouble! The scientists? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's like a Frankenstein and his monster. Or, or like, Eeyore. Uh, Eeyore. Yeah, Eeyore. Thank you. Bella, no, no! Okay, oxygen mask. Do you, uh, okay, oxygen mask. Do you even breathe oxygen? God, I hope so. Getting dizzy. The damn window's cracked. Air escaping. Need to put on... Uh, 
No, no, Fiala needs needs water. Some kind of wall. Oh man, she's withering. Oh, and then um, some other um, things, and he thinks he's in space. He's really nice. He wakes up, and hey, she's good as new. Uh, oh. Hi, and you. I said I was all alone here. I don't understand. What is this place? I don't know. Woke up just a moment ago, fully healed. I don't care for this place, Commandi. It's at the feel of death. I have a bad feeling about all this. Good day to you, honored visitor. Who? Oh, we brought, no, it's a we brought you around to our heaven here in the heart of the scorched outback. We hoped you and you have rested well. Why did you bring us here? We and, and, uh, we have, but we do not understand what is this place and why did you bring us here? Well, okay, we'll get to that, mate. Please choose your weapon and step on the platform. Oh, no, the dangerous oh, game. Oh, look, they're on this giant wheel thing. And that's where this one ends. No man escapes the Kanga Rat Murder Society. <laughs> and this is more like a traditional cliffhanger than it does a, um, you know, it's just doomed. Mm -hmm. But what did you think of that one? Oh, that's great. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> really like the art of this one. Probably my favorite. Really? Well, I would say also, I do like how um, Vienna actually um, is doing pretty well, you know, as a character. <gasps> it's a tiger! Yep, Bill Willingham and Ivan Rice does do this one. Well, that's Gary Frank on the cover. And they're trying to get away and everything. Um, they're driving around. Um, like, we've already got gone going to, uh, much too fast for the continued harmony survival-wise. I don't care. Take the risk. Unless, hmm, the chance of getting shot in the, is the greater danger. Trust me, faster is better. Hang on, Kamandi. I have an idea. I like how she's actually gone from being I'm yours to actually being her own character. Yeah. Oh, I, I realize, like, the art went from, like, you know, like a... Realistic. What happened? More realistic. Uh, no. Um, Like, there were some parts where he looks like a man, and there's some parts like this one where he looks more like a teenager. Which I think that's much more like it. But yeah, they end up heading into the water, and she makes this big ball around him, and then she soon becomes a raft. Oh, yeah. nice. She's useful. She's a yep. <laughs> what, hap what happened to us? Once I determined I could survive the fall, I realized we both could. Just a matter of destroying my default form enough to wrap you in a protective shell. Armor. You cost me an armor. Oh, yes. Armor works as a superior visual reference. I envisioned it as protective package for a treasure gift, but your example is even better. Are you okay? You look all, all ripped apart. I'll be okay someday. Keeping my body distorted and buoyant enough to make a raft is painful. Aww. But then she's like, I won't last much longer unless, as much as I hate to abandon you, just as you've rejoined the world, it'll go much easier on me if I, if I let myself go to sleep. Dormant. I'll wake up, up instinctively once I feel good earth against my fibers again. Good luck, Kamandi. I hope we make it. Days pass. Oh, look at the doggy! It's a goal! It's a goal! It's a Labrador! Ah! But yeah, wakes up and everything. They're all woken on board. But then it asks, um... I was like, um, where's Villa? Who would Villa be? Well, not my girl. And, well... My well, not my girl, not formally, but she was the ramp that I was on. She kept me alive. Oh, I see. The pile of twigs and waterlogged and fronds you were on. Cute, you gave your rap a name. Good and proper thing to do. Every ship should have a name, even a tiny raft of twigs. We left it behind, of course. Oh. Ah! Well, at least she's not dead. But she won't wake up until she feels the earth. Yep, so she's. Well, we will. Don't worry. We will see her again, but not for a long time. Okay. But yeah, soon they're taken aboard. I just like how he. I have a right those great dogs, doesn't he? I'm sorry, what? I said, I have a right those great dogs, doesn't he? Yes. Don't I love it. Look perfect. But yeah, basically, they're taken aboard to this island. What's, there's the tiger. Tiger! Orangutan! They're basically going through and everything. They're just talking a bit more about, you know, the world, you know, like, um, 
I'm now I'm already on my way to my next case here on the mainland. Plan to take some time off in the island, but a message for found me. No rest for the weary. Not even for a world class detective like me. Hey, but how about this? You could tag along with me if you like. While I'm doing my job, we can ask around about your people. Pleased to have the company. As he's, he's as explaining himself as they're walking through. So basically, he's there helping him out, finding his people, you know, his parents. So this guy's actually being legitimately altruistic. Mm-hmm. Not boring you with my stories, am I? No, sir. Enough with the sirs. Call me Mac. Everybody does. Yeah, basically, they've been going about this for a month. But yeah, they start talking a bit more and everything. Um, town up uh, north called the Weeping Pox. You know it? The town or... Oh, of course not. You mean the pox? Nope, never heard of it. Kills the lungs. Most who get it die slowly. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Sorry. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, he's saying like someone's been there hired to find him, and you can do it if he exists. I'll find him, but not tonight. Time to get some sleep, skinny white cub. Lots of miles to cover in the morning. Uh oh, the Bintar Horde. I love all these names. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Oh, he's a little Western cowboy tiger. Yep. Um, now, Commandy, now. Yeah. Oh man, this is awesome. Whoa! Yep, putting up a good valiant fight and everything until he soon finds a, a lemur. There's a lemur, right? Usually a lemur. Uh, oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yep, but he finds like, how lucky you are, and you are a human boy, to be a part and part of my project. Together, we're going to save so many. Too bad you're going to have to die, though. Can't be helped, uh, can, can it? Sacrifice for the greater good. Basically, this is like a lemur version of Dr. Mangala. Who's Dr. Mengele? The German um, and doctor who researched and experimented on the people in the uh, during the Holocaust. Oh. That one. They developed a lot of great new um, medical um, discoveries but at the expense of testing it on people. Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> yeah, um, basically, you know, like the, it says right in the scripture, then look at my proud as a cheap bitch. So by the time Mac catches up to him, oh, oh. it's a cliffhanger. Right? Oh I mean, how can gosh. he do this one, right? How is he still alive? Hold on a second. I know. Well, he's barely alive. Can he still connect? See all those those tubes. Oh, that's so. Oh my gosh, I'd be so traumatized. Yep. Next one then, is, and is uh, but yeah, that is a, that's a clip. And then even get this in the next um, pay, um, issues page from Bill William. He admits he was originally going to put him in the canned food, but he realized, yeah, there's nothing to come out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized, didn't in the first one they found like a whole place of a uh, human, human. Well, we never, we didn't see much of it though. I wish we did. <laughs> <laughs> just a sec, just checking something on my phone. Uh, Hold on. Russian bears. Oh, yeah, Steve Orlando, Philip Tan, and this artwork is um, Andy Kubert. Hmm. How come That's he's it. not. Andy Kubert. He's not credited? No, right there. I said the cover. Oh, there we <laughs> I didn't see it. It was so small. Yeah, well, like I said, this is the, these are the covers. Gotcha. Just, just a sec, just a sec. But yeah, um, but yeah, there's the Philip Tan cover. His artwork, I like him, but he's a bit on the rough side. But yeah, what does he do? Now, here's the funny thing. William thought there's no way he's going to figure out a way to resolve it. My, my way is going to be the only way. And Orlando came up with a way of forcing the guy to put him right back together again. Mm. So yeah, that's the whole point of it. Just threatens him to do it. Puts him right back. He wakes up and um, you saved my life, Max. Thank you. A parting gift. Your parents are still out there, but I'm staying here to figure this machine out. Maybe able to help to print a weeping pox vaccine. 
off radio a friend, Renzi. He's tra a traveling scientist, real sk uh, shiny skid. He owes me one. He'll take you farther north. Okay, I like that. So he's sticking around just so he can, you know, finish up his thing. Oh, but all of a sudden they're shot down. And then they're taken through. Um, oh, that one guy there, thats I forget what he's supposed to be based off of. Iron Man. No. Dang. Insufficient though you may be. Uh-oh. I am Grono's up, um, Cub. The Alpha of Alphas. The one driven by many. If, um, this entire city throws through me, thousand strong. It's customary to quake with respect. Sure, I'm quaking, and it's commandy, not cub. Now tell me, what did you do, and what did you did with Renzi? Your friend's atomic energies may fuel our city. You better not hurt him. The blame would not be mine, but ours. Oh boy, I think this is supposed to be a communist. Oh. But basically, he's a bear and everything. Your leader, even your gods, answer to the people. You've given up your life for that. I do believe in it. You want freedom, Grisindo? You know it. That's why you've quieted your, cr quieted your crown. I graciously accept this honor long ago. Honor? You're trapped by this world. I and, and I understand that. I was raised in a bunker. That was my world. Small, rigid, and I had to leave it to survive. Oh, so he's basically trying to convince them to um to give it, give up what he's doing. They fight their way out, and oh shit! The whole city turns into this giant bear god creature. That's amazing. Oh, the volcanoes uh, on his back. <laughs> oh, like a Godzilla. Yep. We've gone, we've been going the wrong way the whole time. I truly do want to sing for myself more than anything. I no longer wish to leave my people, but I cannot rob them and myself of the one chance to bring our face to life. I do want to escape. I do, I promise, but I still believe. You lied to me. I'm sorry, Commandy. Oh, man. You used me as an excuse to escape. Oh, man, I feel bad, and there he goes falling again. Oh. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a bulldog. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> this is um, um, Marguerite Bennett and Dan Jurgens. Did you do you see like the it, the one of the, yep. the second dog is wearing a good girl? Yep, yep. That's great. Oh, and they uh, that cover. I think that's Bill Sinkowitz for the cover. Oh, Dark Knight's Metal. <laughs> yep. Oh, look. But yeah, Marguerite Bennett and Dan Jurgens. Ah! The Cortex Crown. Come on, Metal. Come on, Scrap. As he's using the crown to con control everything. Renzi, I'm here to save you. Huh? <laughs> Grab the whelp at once, Commander Beatrice. I'm not uh, sorry about this, pup. Oh, they bag him up. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Let's go. Hey, let's. Oh, they're all females. Oh. Well, I see. <laughs> I see now. <laughs> Let's go, ladies. We'll get Commander Beatrice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Bulldog Britannics. Nice. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh, Dog Pink Plucker. Yay. And there's um, Renzi or whatever his name was. And woo, the, dam the damnable, dirigible dog house. <laughs> oh, and it's a Roddy. Yep, and they're heading to Britannic, which basically is Britannia, or Britain, I bet. More doggies! You smell like, uh, uh, you smell like you've met two, um, three supporting female characters top, both of whom died, I'm guessing. Not to worry, laddie, we're here to improve your stats and your day. Oh no! <laughs> This Indeed we are. Quit your, quit your flirting, Sadie. <laughs> quit, 
quit your flirting. It would have been, oh. been great if she would have said bitch. Yep. Uh oh. Boom. As they're falling down. Don't worry, Commandy. I've got you. Yeah, uh, you do. Oh, look. She's in love. Oh, my gosh. She has a twinkle in her eye. Mm hmm. Polar parasites. An Ooh. ice wizard. Oh, no. Some of them are getting grabbed and attacked. No. Oh, no. Be infected. Oh, no. The material you stole from Bear City was the damnable and uh, made of metal you've stolen from there over the years. Stolen is a technical term. So he takes the crown and starts using it to manipulate them and, uh-oh, bring us more hosts. Oh, no. Great. Heck, were you on? Uh, uh, that and then, oh, excuse me. I was eavesdropping through, but were you going to say the world helps <laughs> them out? Oh, boy. Well, I guess every dog has her. Please stop. <laughs> Parachutes, Lassie. I got myself an inkling. On. Sorry, I keep getting texts. But yeah, they head on out there and basically trying to see. Um, um, I knew your mother in the android wards. Huh? What? My mother, don't leave us, Commandy. Mac charged me. I charged me with looking out for you. I, I thank you, Renzi. But the hot air balloon won't work without you. And you can help the Britannics more than you can help me. I'm back on track. Find your parents. Save the world. And I'm sure we'll meet again. So he's left behind as he's continuing on north. Uh oh. Ah! Okay, now that's a cliffhanger. So yeah, we're getting through. We're up now up to issue eight. So we're about four. We're now at the final quarter. Okay, Jim Lee cover with Keith Giffen doing the writing now instead of the artwork and Steve Rudd Rude being the artist. <laughs> Rude. Yep. All right. Boop, he's cursing. Sorry, Grandma, but you. I, but how did you feel with a sucking sucker, parasite, lo, um, looking to score a free meal? Actually, those words I picked up from you do make me feel a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Splash! Tries to get it off. He does so, and then, oh boy, elks. Those are elks, right? Or. Uh Billy goats or is Billy? Oh, they're all Billy goats. Praise the gods! The gods yet smite them and banish them from our land forever. A great day, a wonderful day. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, what are those? Coyotes? They look all different. They all look different. I said they look yeah. all different. <laughs> so so yeah, more, yeah, more animal fighting and everything. You booby trapped the woods. Aye, they're and they are barbaric horde. The wolf, though they're wolves. The wolf folk. And he finds a bit more about the history of everything. Um But Wait, yeah. When, I, when did that happen? Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, a bunch of this him singing about some other stuff. I think they're trying to fit in um some of the other adventures that happened in the original comic. Oh, so Dr. Canis was always there. A, a version of him, yes. Oh, version. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, hold on a second again. Sorry. Um, but yeah, then he, yeah, just, he's still dealing with the, I guess, the Billy Goats. And it's showing, oh, the Odyssey, Iliad. Oh, boy, so they're taking it as if it was, um, like, there's nothing like a dip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. They're basically basing themselves off of Greek through the Odyssey. 
Ah, uh, okay. They make some sense. Ulysses, Ulysses, they're crazy. Both factions. Time to get gone if I can get. So basically, you know, he's just letting them continue to fight each other while he gets out of there. Erp, I'm not going to make it. The ships are moving too fast. Oh, wow. Crash. <laughs> I, oh, I, Odysseus, Odysseus. Well, which name do you choose? Great. Now you sound like them. Maybe it's catching. <laughs> uh oh. Sea monster. Yep, it never ends. Now this next one is going to have um, Tom King, um, Kevin Eastman. Um, um, Kevin E. Williams the, and the second and um, this one was done by this cover is done by um, Mark Buckingham but yeah look at this now remember this is the same this is Kevin Eastman and Freddie Williams so these oh, are the guys who have done going to be black and white? mostly yes Ooh. funny thing is though Tom King would later admit that he's like, he's getting to work with him, but it's like, what, and Eastman, and Eastman's like, what are we drawing? Uh, a room. A room. What's, I can work on that. What's in the room? There's a door. Basically, King realized, oh, I want to work with Eastman, but what I had in mind is not someone that's usually up to his style. <laughs> mm. Like, what, uh, like, it was too hard, or? Uh, no, no, no. Just the fact that he feels like he's disappointing him. <laughs> well, basically, this whole thing is just one big scene where there's a door. Someone keeps coming through these weird alien creatures, and they keep taking someone away back through the door. So it's one of those things. It's one of those type of stories where you either can fight or you just wait until it's your turn. Mm. And we get we find out about all these different individuals, but each time they keep getting taken. Aww. Even as one bird who was, who was writing a story, and like, no, but but Mr. Robot, sir, I'm almost finished the story. Aww. No. He keeps on trying to fight him, keeps doing no good, until eventually all of them, like, yeah, all of them are being taken away. Even this tortoise. They all keep doing it. And each time he keeps on trying to stop him, like almost a whole year is passing. My gosh. Yeah. Knocked out, and he's the last one taken away. It would have been so funny if they were all taken to like a paradise on <laughs> the next one. Uh, trust me, it's not. I know. It would have been great, though. We just suffered in that room forever just so we can have a paradise. <laughs> and we had all this thing from talking from Jack Kirby. His whole big speech he had given, um, it, uh, it, apparently he had given. And next one is, you probably see that was Shane Davis. Hmm. We're nearly done. This is Greg Pack and Shane Davis, and this cover is Francis Manipal. Hey, like, Director, I bring you Kamandi, the latest specimen of evisceration and mounting, here in the Museum of Animal Abominations. And egad, man, what have you got there? Is that, is that a human? That's ridiculous. But look, look at him, hairless, clawless, definitely a human. We're not supposed to be eviscerating humans. I just... And bring the specimens from the room when you're ready for them. I'm not responsible for Don't give me that, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see the photo of him and his mom. While they are arguing, and I like how, you know, how David is taking what Eastman created and still utilizing them. Keeping things consistent. Oh. It's you know, Richard Charles 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 Oh Big pants! Blood, blood, blood! Robots don't bleed! And they like, come on, do you say? Today you ride with the sharks! 
It, it whistles. Free, we. What is it, Captain? We found a human, and he's on our side. Wait a minute. What? What do you want me to do? These warriors will show you the way. Hey, I mean, we will infiltrate the tower and kill the commander. The commander? Robots said they had orders to ship humans to the commander. And maybe that's where my parents are. I'm in. My name's Kamandi. What's yours? Dead woman. Pardon? Dead woman. Okay, uh, how about you guys? Dead man. Dead girl. <laughs> so welcome, dead boy. I'll stick with Kamandi. You'll, you still don't understand. If you march with us, you must die. Dead woman. Exactly. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> okay, that is actually scrub writing, isn't it? Like, dead woman. Exactly. <laughs> That's sad, though. It is sad. Makes I'm it like club. Yep, shooting them all up, and then, uh, uh, like, stop, bots. Don't you recognize a human when you see one? Mom? What did you call me? Mother, my God! I thought I, I I thought I thought I was just saving another human. I didn't, I didn't. You, you really do look like me, don't you? You're real. I wasn't sure. Even after I found the pictures, I could barely remember. Oh my boy, I'm so sorry. When the great disaster struck, I left you in a hidden facility under the protection of a robot grandmother. It seems so ridiculous now, but I wanted to preserve a normal life for you while your father and I fought in the android wars. But when I returned, the facility had been destroyed and you were gone. I've tried to find you ever since. But never would I believe you would find me first. <laughs> uh, before the uh, Run, mother, before the commander finds out. Uh, but you see, I'm the commander. What? Don't look at me like that, my son. No, no. The shark said, they said the commander will save the world. Ever since the disaster, the planet has been lost to us humans. But I conquered the robots. And soon I will release the pathogen that will wipe the contingent of human-animal hybrids from the face of the planet. And then she's shot and dead. Oh, my gosh. I was like, I can't wait till she dies. <laughs> that was fast. We're almost done. Dang, I, I I forgot to look at the numbers. I'm like, what what number are we on? <laughs> number eleven, and this is like Williams and Williams and Walt Simonson with a cover by um. Oh, let me double check. Over oh, the my ma, mother, no. You're like, come on, my side. I searched for you so long. Your father, your father. Where is my father, mom? Is he alive, mom? No. But turns out she's a robot too. What the heck? She's Everybody not real lied. at all. This is not just a tower, commandy, and I'm not your mother. I'm the mothership. Rob Williams and um the main cover was um Nick Bradshaw. And now <laughs> I shall complete my mission and take you home to him. Remember, each issue, they're doing their whatever they want as long as they play it off. So if someone wanted to have it be that was his mother dead or maybe not even die, they could have, but Rob is saying, nope, she's just a robot too. So yeah, they're all gunning everyone down. You got the shark shooting. Everything's out, good as going crazy. Give them, like, take the gauntlet. The jet park shark at and attack crew control our awesome flying machine via this. A control gauntlet. Use it now. Save us, human. Save us all. <laughs> It's over, dead boy. There's too many of them. We fought nobly, but it seems the robots are fated to win this day. Perhaps. Whoa! The jetpacks come to me! Ah! Yeah, got a gun as he's flying through, and he's um, like, they're in space. The human is in the control room. He could access the mothership's main computer. He could reveal the master plans. Quickly, burn through the door! Oh, no. Tavius is being attacked. No, oh, he's killed. I'm all alone. Alone? No, my child. You, the last boy on Earth, who I've been searching for for so long, are no longer alone. That voice, could it be father? Father? Ha! No. He basically, yeah, he's the misfit. My God, the horror. 
Yes, yes. Now you are far closer to the truth. I may repulse you, but our destinies are tied together, you and I. It is for this reason I built the mothership to find you and bring you to me. You may have locked yourself up in the control room, but all you have succeeded in doing is imprisoning yourself, child. The mothership is cloaked from view to the planet's defenses below. Help is not coming. You will be brought to me at the tech moon. I have been searching you and for so long you for so long. I took your parents, and now I shall have you to complete my master plan. You gross. Oh boy, look, there's the what the wor- earth the earth the earth looks like. Oh, the gorilla, the gorilla Squad! Yay! Oh boy, all this insanity going on. Like, yes, com- run, Commandy, run to safety, but know that you will never learn the truth of what happened to your pan- parents, a truth that only I can provide. I know horror, misfit. I've seen nothing but horror since I began this journey, but now I see that you are the greatest evil this new world can offer. Yes, where is he'll stop him? Um, oh boy. Yeah, basically, like, uh, Kamadi fights with us. He is an ally of the Gorilla UFO Squadron. Yay! He yeah, looks like, uh, he reminds me of that Marvel villain, the one who has the, a um, gigantic Mordok, head Mordok, in the chair. Mordok, Mordok. Mordok, but with uh, Guy Gardner's hair. <laughs> but yeah, they're paying their way to the tech moon. He's ready to ram it. Let's go. But then blows up and he's then knocked right out into space. Now that's a different type of falling. But yep, we're going. Why have to breathe? That's the whole big question. But now the last issue. He dies. <laughs> no, cover is by um, Frank Miller. It's um, written by, and the first story is by Gail Simone and Ryan Sook. And the last story is by Ke- uh, Paul Levitt and Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. So half of the story? Just like the first issue. Just like the first issue. Yeah, okay, making sure. And yeah, he's fall um, that's Lopez's Garcia Lopez's um work. And there's um um Levitt and, and Suck's work. But yeah, he wakes up, um the fortune was called Command D and everything, and then a girl version. Commanda, the last girl on earth. As she's looking through and soon she finds command commandy. Thank you. Speak. Thank you. Blue sky above us and whatever dwells there. Thank you. They're trying to talk to each other a bit. Um, but on um, Kirby I and mean, dot Kirby dot like the Kirby <laughs> crackles. No, like, I know that feeling. Have you ever been kissed? Do dogs count? If she was really cute, I feel like I'm falling. I think that's part of it, Cameron. Close your eyes. Ah, he's still falling. Because uh-huh. he said he never eyes. he wanted to kiss a girl in the beginning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, they help. They catch him. Help him down. Um, more and more craziness is going on. Misfit wants him still. Crash it. Oh, Silverback's Aww. dead. Orion's dead. They, you know, they give him a burial as he then continues on heading through it. Oh, no. More rats. If the rats find you, they'll take you to the farm. You don't want that. She was warning me. Come with you, rat. Skirt. I mean, he just fights him off. <laughs> I... Wait. And Wanop said you'd and said he'd come, he said. Oh, boy. Moore's misfits are being taken to New York. Um, the boy who talks, the feeder of the tiny, the massive. You are very welcome. I'm sorry for our poor hospitality. You better. Some fools call it garbage. We call it the banquet hall. Of course it's garbage. <laughs> oh, bo- I, oh, no. The OMAC Eye. As we see all this stuff, the Legion, yeah, Batman, Batman Beyond, Beyond. So many different futures. Heroes like you, Commandy. It is said the eyes, and it, it's as I said, the misfits' revenge on all life. His terror not has landed. Well, if I'm in, I suppose I better know the plan, don't you think? Basically, it leads into this one final showdown, everything. And he gathers up all the rats. 
into a giant form to fight him. Nice. That's amazing. I love that. Yep. Ratcatcher, get on it. Ratcatcher number two. But yeah, they use the power of the OMAC to attack. But then all of a sudden we see Kirby shows up saying, I'm your daddy, son. And this leads into the epilogue. Hey, kid, how you doing? You're my father. Nah, not exactly, anyhow. But without me, you wouldn't be here, that's for sure. But you look like Mr. Kirby. But he was a robot. My mother was a robot. And you, you're a Jin GD genius. What's the difference? <laughs> Seeing as I can make stuff up and make it real. So what'll it be, kid? Three wishes, you know. Gold, silver. I'm really good at silver. Beautiful gals, like them, bi like them big. Maybe like that dream girl I sent your way. No, sir. But if you really have that kind of power, let's use it for the right reasons. I know this will sound selfish, but my first wish is to find my parents. But it, uh, but it's not because I want them. Well, I do. But that's supposed to be how I can save the world. You're a good kid, good heart. Been through a lot, too, I see. But you don't give up. I like it. it I, I, I like that. It's how you fall, and fall down. It's what you do when you get back up. Guess so. So he takes him through, and he seems to wake up. But it's just a, a repeat, like, hello, dear. If you're watching this, we passed on. And I hope we said a proper goodbye. I know. Fine. But if it was necessary. Necessary? I've almost been killed a dozen times, and all I was supposed to do was to find was a video that was here all along? What crap? <laughs> hey, genie, genius, whatever you are, that was a crummy way to grant my first wish. It was your first wish, kid. I got to follow the script if you if you write one, unless you let me improvise. And look, oh, that's Jack and Rosalind, his wife. Oh. Twitchy says, I'm going to fix the world somehow. Get me the leaders of all the tribes. Get them all together. I've got a few things to say to them. You want them? You got them. Pop! Villa! Oh, snap. She's back. How do I get them to listen? Villa, I was dormant, twisting, and then suddenly, I'm glad you're here. But I have to talk to these, whatever they are, before they start killing each other. It's up to me now to save the world. You are the one. You can. It feels like I can somehow. Something's different in me. Stronger. Yes. Stop. Listen. Whatever the great disaster was, it ruined Earth for all of us. If we're going to save the world, we have to work together. Animals, humans, plants, even robots. I can, I can feel it. Even if I couldn't explain it, the whole room was focused on me. Almost in trance. I had a power over them. Is this, is this you? Did I use my third wish somehow and get this power? Nah, you had the power in you, kid. It just took a bit of a dremelin to activate it. Sometimes being scared or going out of our way, okay, our comfort zone is good for us. And for you, well, that's what you need to bring your power to life. Me, I got the power of limited to man and imagination. You, you got the power of your name, starting with the power to command. But why me? Because I imagine you that way, of course. So I have to tell them what to do to repair the world from the great disaster? I'm only human. How am I supposed to know? It's all in your name, kid. All you got to do is wish it and wish it was back like it was before. Like getting rid of a messed up document and going to a fresh copy. I don't understand. Like a reset, kid. Bunch of different ways to do it. But yours is pretty damn obvious. Use your third wish and say your name. Accent on the third syllable. You got to make it real, kid. Make it real. Command D. Bingo. Command D it is. Fresh copy coming up. And he, uh, have a good life, kid. That was three. I got other worlds to create. Come on, D. Whoosh. And he's back to normal, not remembering anything, but it seems like things are normal now. He doesn't remember a thing. Just be glad you, got, and you hit Command D for a reset, kid. Hey, you out there, I'm Bobo, the detective chimp. Not DC's mascot, exactly, but it would have been if I hadn't been cheated out of it by some silly publisher or another. Yeah. Hope you got a good ride on this crazy commodity challenge. This is comics at its best, breaking rules and having fun. You're the ones we do it all for. Bet you thought we were, bringing com and we were being lazy, having commodity fall again and again. It was all a plan, him falling so he can get back up. That was the adrenaline he needed to activate his power. Well, maybe not apply exactly, but it sounds good, huh? Anywho, 
Uh, we had a great time. Hope you did too. And any story that ends with a gr um, groaner of a pun can't be all bad, right? Come on, D. Sheesh! The end. <laughs> and, hold on. Oh, they don't show the um, dedication, the stuff from Levitz and the dedication to Len Wein. Oh, that sucks. It's only in the physical books. Yep. Hold on a second. I got that. Hold on. Just a moment. Let me get to it. Yeah, that sucks. They don't. You would think they would have that. Oh, that's great. He, he, he created, because he's the one who created Dead Man, Swamp Thing, and, um, Wolverine. Romance comics. Well, to a degree. <laughs> so, but yeah, though, so what did you think? Oh, that was amazing. I love that. I was, I I want DC to do something like that, something like more, something like that, something more Good fun. for Perez. Like, they should do that for Perez next. Ooh, that'd be so good. But Which character would they use it on? That's a good question. Someone he's known for creating. That's the hard part. Starfire? Maybe. But anyway, though, but what would you say was your favorite issue, your favorite creative team? Um, My favorite creative team would probably be the one with the, with the leopard scientists. You mean leaner, lemur? No. The leopard one. Leopard? Oh! Oh, the god one. That would be number four. The James Ooh. Kenyon and Carlos Dionda. Nice. Yes, that's the one. So, yeah, but how was this for something that each one led into the other and the other? You had no idea what the other creator was going to do. It's just right? so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, you know, this is your... Uh, how can you tell when somebody's a writer? Boom, they just create all this stuff, you know? Exactly. And again, I love the consistency. Each artist made sure. Now, obviously, I think it explains why Dan DiDio said this took two years to make. Two years? That's what it said in the intro. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, because I think, I think that's why. They did each issue one at a time. How else? Because obviously, because otherwise, if they didn't, that would have led into them having, you know, the other the other artists on the other books not knowing what designs to go with. Because you saw that, like Kevin Eastman's robots, those lasted until the end, having those long, gangly arms. Yeah. <laughs> or um, Villa, I love Villa. I'm surprised she lasted as long as she did. Aren't yeah, you? I'm so surprised, yeah. Yeah, cause you would have thought they would have just killed her off once the next team did, but like, I guess they loved her. Yay! Or so they, they abandoned her, but again, yeah, at least she didn't die. And I told you she'd pop up at the end. You spoiled it. I'm just kidding. I didn't say when or how. No, I knew it was going to be the end. Right, right. But um, but yeah, overall, though, what would you give rate this if you had to do it on a 1 to 10? Hmm, an 8. An eight? An eight or nine. I right. What would you say was your least favorite by comparison? Not saying it was bad, but your least favorite by comparison. My least favorite. Um, the first one. There's the second one. I don't even remember what the third one was. Uh, third one. Oh was, no! Wait, I got it. The third one. That was Amanda Connor. That was Amanda Connor one that gave us Villa. Uh, the one where they had more wars with the with the dog people and oh the, really uh, that oh oh really the one that this, uh, this is after the the whole lady the lady this is after the lady dogs one oh oh so that would have been this one yeah the one where they were in the ice arctic and everything and you had the bug and those things no, the one after that, I believe. Oh, 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 the one with the goats and the wolves. Yes. Yeah, I got to agree. That was probably the weakest one because it just felt like, what was the point of it? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you could have done something pretty interesting with that. I mean, like, you even had goats, like, shooting their own uh, sheepskin and all that stuff. Exactly. And, well, the whole idea was to 
zealot, you know, factions. Yeah. Oh, both of them, re, re, you know, coming with their own interpretation of what um, Odysseus was doing. Yeah. And I'm like, eh, I don't really care about Odysseus, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, and I thought the ending was really good. A great tribute having uh, having Kirby be Jin. Hmm. But yeah. So that's all. Who knows what we'll talk about next time. But thank you for coming on, Bianca. No problem, Bob. Yep. Take care. Bye.